The Great Lakes region of North America harbors 20% of Earth's liquid freshwater, and we, the residents of this region, play a central role in its stewardship. The ecological integrity of this remarkable ecosystem is threatened by aquatic invasive species, or AIS. Greater than 185 non-native species are now established in the Great Lakes region where they have caused dramatic and, in many instances, irreversible changes to our ecosystem, including its fisheries. I'm Jeremy Geist, ecologist and Great Lakes Stream Restoration Manager for Trout Unlimited, and in this video I'm going to introduce two nuisance species that have recently been detected in some of Michigan's highest quality rivers for the first time, New Zealand mud snails and the algae didymo, which is sometimes referred to as rock snot. I'm going to talk about the ecology of each species, how to identify them, and importantly, show you how you can safely decontaminate your waders and gear to minimize spread to other water bodies. Let's start with New Zealand mud snails, or NZMS. NZMS are now found in all five Great Lakes and at least seven Michigan rivers, including here on the Osable. The Boardman River, the Platte River, Grass, Manistee, and the Pier Marquette Rivers. In some systems, such as the Osable River, mud snails reach local densities of over 100,000 individuals per square meter. While individually small, only about five to seven millimeters, or about an eighth of an inch, in aggregate, mud snails can outcompete native macroinvertebrates, leaving trout and other fish with a diminished food supply. In fact, even when mud snails are ingested by trout, they can pass through the digestive system alive, potentially further expanding their range. Their small size and resistance to drying out are two traits that enable mud snails to hitchhike on anglers' gear, especially waders and wading boots. One study found that NZMS can stay alive for weeks on moist surfaces, such as those provided by waders and boots. And the fact that mud snails can reproduce asexually means that it only takes one individual to start a new population. Similarly, the algae didymo can be transported by anglers when it becomes attached to wading gear. Individual didymo cells are microscopic and invisible to the naked eye. When environmental conditions are favorable, cells produce long stalks which can be easily seen. These bloom conditions can form thick carpets that cover stream bottoms and drastically alter river food webs and fisheries. Like NZMS, didymo can reproduce asexually, so again, it only takes one cell to start a new population. Didymo has been observed in the St. Mary's, Manistee, Boardman, Rapid, and Osable rivers. Didymo covers rocks and other submerged surfaces, and it feels a bit like wet wool to the touch, and is in fact not slimy despite the rock's not name. In the water, stalks may be floating above the rocks, but once you take the rock out of the water, the mat collapses. Once established, there are no known means of controlling Didymo or mud snails, and so care is needed to prevent further spread into uninvaded rivers. The most effective tool we have at our disposal to prevent spread is decontaminating our angling gear, especially waders and wading boots. Decontamination gets tricky when multiple invasive species are found in a water body. For example, both NZMS and Didymo have now been introduced and are established in the Boardman and Manistee rivers. The good news is that the common household cleaning product Formula 409 Antibacterial All-Purpose Cleaner, when applied to angling gear, causes significant mortality to both species compared to other chemical treatments. To effectively decontaminate waders and wading boots for Didymo and NZMS, we recommend this five-step process between trips and before moving to a new body of water. Follow these steps at a location away from the water's edge to avoid accidental discharge into surface waters. Step one, stomp your boots firmly to help dislodge organisms, organic matter, and sediment. Then two, spray liberally with Formula 409, targeting the soles, lacing, and any folds or crevices in your boots or waders, where organisms are most likely to be trapped. 3. Use a brush to work in Formula 409. 4. Wait at least 10 minutes. And 5. Rinse waders with water to further dislodge any organisms and to avoid contaminating the river. Additionally, consider the following when possible. Avoid visiting multiple rivers in a single day. Plan time to decontaminate between trips. Designate specific gear, especially porous items like nets or rope, for use only in infested waters. When we as anglers take these steps when we move from water body to water body, or even within a water body, such as fishing different river reaches and locations in rivers, we help minimize the risk of spreading Didymo and NZMS. These measures help ensure that the ecological integrity of our freshwater ecosystems remain intact and that they can be enjoyed by future generations of anglers. Lastly, if you detect the presence of Didymo or NZMS, please make use of these resources. 